In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Nintendo Switch emulator, Citron, and I will be using Windows 11. Okay, so let's head on over to citronmu.org. The link to this page will be in the description below. Once you are here, go ahead and click right here where it says download latest version. This will take you to another page showing you the latest updates and version of Citron. As the recording of this video, the latest version is 0.4. Now if we scroll down, you will see your download links. This emulator is also available for Linux, but since we're using Windows, we're gonna download this link right here. Go ahead and click on it, and your download should start. Now if you don't have 7-Zip installed on your PC, then go ahead and download this program. We're gonna need this to extract our emulator as well as other files. The link to this page is also in the description below. I have saved the Citron file on my desktop. You guys can save it wherever you like, whether that be an SSD, external SSD, hard drive, or external hard drive, it's up to you. Also here on my desktop, I have a folder containing my firmware, my keys, and some Switch ROMs. Now the firmware and keys are required to get this emulator up and running. And I am sorry guys, I cannot tell you here on YouTube where to get a firmware and keys. But if you check out my Patreon page, link in the description below, I have some videos there that can help you out with those as well as some switch ROMs. Now let's go ahead and extract our Citron file and this is where we're going to use 7-Zip. Assuming you already have 7-Zip installed, you just want to right click on the file, go to show more options, 7-Zip, and extract the Citron Windows Canary. This is going to create a new folder containing your extracted files. We no longer need the zip file so we can go ahead and right click on it and delete it. Now let's open that firmware folder and we're going to extract our firmware file. Once again, right click on it, show more options, 7-zip, but this time we're going to extract here. Open that keys folder, same thing, extract our prod keys, extract here, delete the zip file, and inside of that folder, you should see prod.keys and title.keys. And last, my switch ROMs folder. Now inside of this folder, I have two more folders I created called DLC and updates. And below those, you see all of my ROMs. Now all of my ROMs are extracted besides Sonic Superstars. And as you see over here, the file types are NSP and XCI files, which are playable in the Citron emulator. To get your files into one of these types, you want to extract them. So using 7-Zip again, we're going to right click on Sonic Superstars, show more options, 7-Zip, and extract here. Now we have an NSP file, which is playable. We can go ahead and delete the zip file. Let's open that DLC folder. And here I have a Sonic Superstars DLC file that will also need to be extracted. And for my DLC, I'm gonna do extract the superstars so it creates a separate folder. Delete the zip file. And last, my updates. And just like everything else, this file also has to be extracted. And I'll do extract here because it's only gonna create one file. Delete the zip folder. Now let's open our Citron folder. And this file here is the emulator. Let's open it. Now, when you first open the emulator, it's gonna tell you that your keys are missing, but no need to worry. I'm gonna show you how to install those, okay? Would you like to share your usage data? This is up to you. I'm gonna select no. Now let's go ahead and install our keys. Let's go up to tools, install decryption keys. Go ahead and locate your keys. In my case, they're on my desktop in that folder called keys. You want to select prod.keys and come down to open. Keys were successfully installed. Okay. Now we can install our firmware. Back up to tools, install firmware, locate your firmware, select the folder, and then hit select folder. Now this emulator will run your games without an up-to-date firmware, but it's always good to have your firmware updated if you're trying to play the latest Switch games. Now we can install our games. So right here it says double click to add a new folder to the games list. So just go ahead and double click right here. 
locate your switch ROMs. Now, when you open that folder containing your ROMs, you're not gonna see your ROMs in that folder. Just come down and hit select folder and your ROMs will load in. Now, if you have any DLC files for any of your games, as I do for Sonic Superstars, I'm gonna show you how to add those. If we come up here to file, install files, going into my DLC folder, open this folder, and inside of that folder is all of my DLC files. And depending on the game, these DLC files can be costumes, extra characters, or extra levels. I'm just gonna highlight all of them and come down to open. It's gonna show you everything you selected, then hit install. Nine files installed, okay. Now if you have any updates for your games, we're gonna do it the same way. Back up the file, install files, locate your update files, Here's my Sonic Superstars update. I'm gonna select it and come down to open. It's gonna show you the file you're about to add, install. One file installed, okay. And now if we look under that add-ons column, you're gonna see that next to Sonic Superstars, it says update 1.1.8. Now let's go up to emulation, configure. If you wanna see your hotkeys or change any of them around, then come over here, click on hotkeys. Then let's come down to graphics. Now, I really don't recommend changing anything here. The emulator will basically have the best settings at default settings. Now, if your PC has an older GPU or CPU and you're getting bad performance with this emulator, then you may wanna come back here and try changing this to OpenGL and see if that helps. And if your PC has a graphics card, then make sure your device is showing that graphics card and not your CPU. Make sure V-Sync mode is turned on so we don't get any screen tear. Now next to resolution. The resolution on the left, which is 720p, will be in handheld mode. And the resolution on the right, which is 1080p, will be in docked mode. By default, if you look at the bottom left of your emulator, you should see that your emulator is running in docked mode. So in that case, we wanna pay attention to the resolution on the right. Now, if you have a pretty decent PC, then you can go ahead and upscale this. I like to do two times at 4K. Now note, if you have a weaker graphics card, then performance will suffer with higher resolution. Now let's go over to advanced, and we're gonna go ahead and enable this, this hack in some cases will eliminate your game stuttering when the shaders are loading in. And your shaders is just something that will load in when you play your games for the first time. Once you load up that game for a second time, you should have minimal to no shaders loading in because they will all be rendered when you first play a game. So if you're new to this, you may think that your game is lagging when you first play it, but most likely it's just the shaders loading in. Now let's come down to controls. We're gonna leave this on Pro Controller and under Input Device. As of right now, I have an Xbox Series and my PlayStation 5 controller connected to my PC. I have also tested a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and all of these controllers work. Any other controllers you may have, you will have to try them out for yourself. I'm gonna select my Xbox controller. And as you notice, when I select that controller, the emulator basically mapped out my controller for me. So there's no setup required unless you wanna change some buttons around, which if you do, you would just simply click inside of that box you wanna change and hit the button on your controller you want to become that button. And we can go ahead and give this controller profile a name, come up here to new, and I'll just call it P1, then hit save. If you wanna set up a second controller, then come up here to player two, click right here where it says connect controller, leave it at pro controller. And for my input device, I'm gonna use my PlayStation 5 DualSense controller, create a new profile for this controller, which I'll call P2. Now to make sure both controllers are connected, down here you should see connected controllers for one and two. We are done here, come down to okay. Now we can go ahead and load up a game, and I'll do Sonic Superstars. Now if you want to go full screen, press the F11 key. 
Thank you guys for watching. I hope the video was helpful. If it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already.